I'd like to bring out our next panel. We have three brilliant guys coming out to share with all of you, and uh, no reason to delay. Gentlemen, come on out. I want to welcome Christian, Ori, and Cameron. Gentlemen, take a seat. We're ready. Hey everyone, so uh, my name is Christian. I just want to start off by saying I got chosen to be the moderator, super last minute. Um, so we'll you volunteered. Just, uh, yeah, I volunteered, I volunteered. So we'll just go uh, on the fly and uh, let's just uh, start off with the uh, introduction. So um, my name is Christian, I'm the co-founder of Nectar House. We're building a design thinking community for innovation. Um, our goal is to inspire and co-create the future of Web3. We believe Web3 is dead. Um, so, so we hope to change that. Um, yeah, and I guess I'll just uh, start off with you. Cool. So uh, my name is Oriel Hine. I'm the co-founder of NFT Basel, um, an investment-grade NFT marketplace that we started about a year and a half ago. Um, essentially, we try to approach the NFT market from a totally different perspective, uh, trying to leverage the best in centralization and bringing in a bit of decentralization into it. Uh, to promote security, to promote adoption of the tech, and basically creating tools for creators versus creating collections. Um, and by doing so, we've, we've managed to create a market that, that promotes investing in NFTs as an asset class versus treating an NFT as simply a digital collectible. Cool. And uh, my name's Cameron Hijazi. I'm co-founder and CEO at Scent. Uh, Scent started as a social network in 2017. And a lot of the early crypto art uh, pioneers kind of met on our network and went off to do great things elsewhere in the metaverse. And then in 2020, Scent launched Valuables, which is an NFT marketplace for tweets. Uh, most famously, we sold Jack Dorsey's first tweet. And then recently, we launched our new product, which is at Scent.co, called Scent Pages, which is a way for any creator to build an audience, uh, particularly via email right now, and distribute NFTs to them for free. Awesome. So uh, just to give some context, so uh, my background, um, so I was an analyst for Salesforce, uh, specifically for their Futures Lab. So my goal was essentially to uh, predict and, and analyze the trends of our digital transformation journey and where we were going to be by the year 2030, and it's specifically what smart city development looked like. Um, that being said, uh, would you guys like to share more on where do you see like, Web3 going? Um, let's start off like, within the next year. Sure. Um, so yeah, for context, my background was banking. Um, I basically started off on Wall Street as a banker at Goldman Sachs. I was doing equity sales trading. Um, moved over into slightly more exotic products, trading derivatives. Um, and I started seeing the opportunity in NFTs when people were looking at them as a form of transferring intellectual property and transferring digital deed of ownership. Um, so I think what's happened to the market now over the last few weeks or months is it's, it's kind of washing out all the fluff that was in the market. There are way too many projects being brought out with very little foundation behind them. Um, and I think now is when you get to see the, the, the infrastructure getting built out. People who are bringing projects to market, whether they be infrastructure like a marketplace or, or, or NFT projects that serve a purpose or, or serve a utility. Um, so I think the next year is the year where you actually really see stuff being built out versus drops coming to market. Um, so now would be, in my opinion, the opportunity to jump in into projects as an equity shareholder. I think this is when you really invest in the infrastructure, the bricks and mortar of what the NFT market will be four to five years from now. Yeah, I largely agree with that. I think you know, crypto has had many cycles of bull and bear crypto winters, right? And a lot of the heavy lifting and the hard work, uh, the progress that's made between each cycle uh, happens in the bear market when a lot of the froth does get washed out. And then a little bit on my background, so I worked in ad tech before uh, starting Scent, and I strongly believe that the next great social network or social media platform will be built using NFTs as one of the core primitives because uh, for the longest time, people would complain like how Facebook is abusing their data uh, and you know, making so much money off of it, but uh, if you were to own that data, or own the value rather, that uh, Facebook accrued from it, it would average to, in the United States, $20 a user. And so it never really made sense to actually own your data. Like, what does that mean? I get a $20 check each year? Um, 
No thanks. And and NFTs change that because they've shown that there's way new valuation models uh, that really change the equity in the things that we create. And so that's the future that we're really heavily investing in. That's awesome. So uh, today with NFTs, um, I guess like the biggest buzz is, is the metaverse, right? Um, what's, what's your guys' thoughts and like, is, is that a space in, in which we're, we're going into? Is that where we're taking this technology? Or are we, take, or are we expanding to different sectors, different industries? Um, that isn't so, I guess, gamified. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it, too, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah, I, I believe we've, we've expanded that bubble this, you know, these last six months, yeah. right? So every, almost every NFT project um, today in terms of, like, community-based projects are, are talking about this, you know, this metaverse creation. Um, I think we're, that, that would be essentially like that three, five-year roadmap. I think we're, we're very too, we're, we're still too soon and too early to, um, to bring all of these NFTs into the metaverse. And it's, and I think the biggest barrier, the bottleneck, is actually the technical development. These NFTs aren't ready to be essentially like pushed into the metaverse, right? The, the file formats are, aren't created yet. Um, the metaverse is not even created yet, right? So the other side is, is still um, a thought, right? It's, it's still a project that has actually yet to, to come to fruition. Um, so I think we're, we're, we're beyond that, but I think emerging technologies such as like AI, 5G, IoT, all of these technologies, um, we're, we're going to reach a point where they're all encompassed with, with NFTs. And I think NFTs really give us that, um, that hope and, uh, of, of our digital transformation journey. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with the time horizon aspect. I mean, like technology aside, because VR is still, like even the headsets, right, are still kind of coming to mass market in a sense. Uh, and AR is not really a thing quite yet. Uh, which I think AR will definitely make it much more palatable to be wearing goggles all the time. Um, I, I do believe that there is just so much that um, we as humans right now are kind of revolting against. Like, sure, there are people who live in Discord servers, but if you look at the 99% and like the latest social app that's blowing up, it's called Be Real, right? And the whole point of Be Real is that you have like two minutes to take a photo and get the fuck off. Right, like, like connect with your friends, send them a photo, and then go live your life and like be a human and, and engage with the world around you. And so I think in terms of our interactions with like social media products, we're actually trending away, but I think the pendulum always swings back and forth. And uh, you know, similar to what you said around that four to five year timeline, I do see a lot of that uh, interest uh, and immersion really happening. Right. What yeah, about you, or? Just to add to that, I think also the concept of the metaverse also shows that interacting in Web3 will also, NFTs are going to be a new method of us interacting with an asset class, right? It doesn't have to just be a digital piece of art, it doesn't have to be a real piece of art. It can literally be anything that you're, you're interacting with that can be identified as, as something unique, right? So when you're in the metaverse, you're essentially acquiring things via NFT, right? That's how you prove the ownership in the digital world. I think what it's showing is that in the physical world, you're also going to be able to interact with those assets as NFTs. So my opinion is in like five, maybe even more as AR develops, you're going to start seeing probably more immersive technology like glasses that allow you to scan stuff as you're walking through and essentially acquiring that asset using an NFT as a proof of ownership. So when you buy a bottle of water, there's a QR, there's not QR, it's a barcode on the back of it. That barcode is essentially the identification number for that NFT. We're just going to learn to track inventory better. We're going to learn to track provenance better. We're, we're basically going to bridge that gap between physical and digital significantly better. And then I think the, the line between digital and physical will thin out significantly more because of it. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so I guess uh, next question. Um, the democratization of NFTs. Uh, how are you guys uh, involved in that aspect? Well, so at Scent, we, uh, we like to joke that the floor price is zero uh, for the NFTs minted through our platform. And uh, obviously we think that a lot of NFTs have the potential to have lots of value, but in our product strategy and in the way that we're thinking about it, most people's perceptions of NFTs are that they're a Ponzi scheme that are destroying the environment, right? And so you layer on the need to either 
purchase crypto or then purchase crypto and then complete a transaction to buy your first NFT and it's like a non-starter. And so with a lot of the creators that we're working with on our platform, we see uh, removing the cost component as a critical part to getting people to own things and understand what does it mean to actually own an NFT. And it turns out like most people won't buy an NFT, but they'll take one for free. You know, and so we hope that by getting just people in the door, uh, we can open it up to the 99% and make more people involved in the space. I love that. Yeah, I also think to that comment you just made that most people will receive an NFT for free, but they don't want to buy it. Like, I experience this all the time where people are like, how on earth do you use a MetaMask? How on earth do you buy an NFT? How do you get Ethereum? I think we've made it way too complicated by completely decentralizing NFT markets. That's why we're such a big believer in semi-centralized, semi-decentralized. Um, because it makes it easier for the buyer to interact with, with digital assets, regardless of if it's a token or an NFT, right? So I think like the main component of democratizing NFTs is granting access into the market, making it easier for the other 95% of the world who aren't really crypto natives or don't understand what the heck a token is to interact with NFTs and get access to a new, version, a new asset class. Um, it cuts out the need for an in-betweener, right? So you, when you're buying a piece of art, you no longer need to go to a gallery to acquire it. Now you can just go onto an NFT marketplace and you can basically get access directly to that artist without any intermediaries playing, playing in that game. Um, same thing with, um, like, essentially, like even the stock market, right? If, if we reach a point where you're able to tokenize basically equities, foreign exchange, commodities, anything, you're just transferring ownership of that equity contract on chain. Um, and that settlement happens instantaneously. You don't need any more clearing houses. You've basically taken two day settlement and cut it down to zero because it's all happening on chain and getting verified immediately. So you're, you're speeding up the process of basically what we're doing today, just using blockchain. You're, you're not recreating the wheel, you just made it faster. All right. And yeah, just to add on that, um, you know, I, I believe I'm, I'm on that same page, right? So uh, the way that we're going to reach mass adoption is through earning, not investing. Um, and we're actually seeing that, you know, that shift, that paradigm shift happening today, right? With the goblins, free mints, right? So um, they allowed for anyone with a MetaMask and, you know, a bit of gas to essentially be a part of this community. Um, and I believe that's actually how we're, we're going to be you know, reaching mass adoption. So through earning, not investing, and through social communities, not DeFi. Um, yeah. yeah, so I'd, I'd love to open up just like the conversation if you guys want to share something, um, you know, more about your project or, or, you know, a big takeaway that you'd like this audience to, to leave today with. Well, I really appreciated what Ori said about, um, you know, being able to track provenance. At Scent, we're really focused on creators and like the particular work that they have and what they put out there. But I think that there, there's so many applications of NFTs beyond just you know, crypto art or digital art or music or media. And uh, I'm really excited to see, for instance, supply chain and things that are like certified organic or ethically sourced um, be able to be verified in a way that doesn't require uh, so much trust and it really comes from the source to the consumer and just bridges them together because I think that there's a lot of opacity in every organization in between today and um, it's just something that I feel like is sorely lacking and is a great opportunity for blockchain as well. Totally. If, if, if you look at pretty much any antiquated industry, like look at the precious stone industry, how often do you know where the rough of a diamond is coming from? How often can you track its process, what country you went through and so on? Like, as, as our world becomes smaller and smaller and international trade becomes more simple and easier to get away with kind of black markets, NFTs, blockchain will essentially clean up all of that. You're, you're finally going to be able to see where something comes from without having to trust someone or without having to look at a piece of paper that could really be replicated quite easily. Like, it's pretty simple to use Photoshop. Most people know how to do it. It's, it's not that complicated. But when something is authenticated on chain, you can't really argue with that. So being able to correct like the luxury asset market, the art market, all, all these things, it's only going to, this is just the first iteration of it, right? Like this is going to slowly start being implemented in inventory management. This is slowly going to move into capital markets. We're essentially treating cryptocurrencies as a, a, a form of foreign exchange, right? Like it's only a matter of time before financial institutions start adopting it with 
all the other asset classes we interact with. And when that starts happening, you're going to start stabilizing the industry. But these kind of corrections kind of show that we need to do that. And I think we've, we've almost focused on the wrong, wrong asset classes a little bit. And that's why we've had this massive correction. No, I agree. I love, I love this, this conversation. I think the, the supply chain use case is you know, one of the biggest ones. Um, you know, every year we have like this like E. coli break in lettuce, right? So we have to recall all lettuce across the nation. Um, and it just cre produce, or creates a uh, huge like food waste, right? So we can re actually reduce the food waste if we can actually, you know, find out which batch was the one with E. coli um, and just remove that from the shelf as opposed to, you know, recalling and creating mass panic. Um, so, you know, I love that, that use case. But now you're breaking away from decentralization, which is pretty much what everyone here believes in, right? You're essentially re-centralizing everything. But I think that's kind of the purpose of all this. If you can't create a system completely based on trust, just close your eyes and assume everyone's going to be good. Because I don't think that's how it works. That's pretty much what happened with all the NFTs in the market literally a couple weeks ago, right? Like, everything collapsed. And that's because we put way too, much, way too much trust in the system that wasn't being moderated, no one was really keeping an eye on it or filtering out real from fake and so on. Um, and I think we do need, especially as a crypto community, we need to focus far more on finding efficient ways to centralize the bodies, but allowing, to, allowing all that information to be made public. With that, there's no more gatekeepers into industries, there's no more hidden information, everything should be open and on chain, essentially doing an ether scan to prove where anything comes from. But we have to say, fine, we have to trust some institutions to moderate this. If not, we're, we're, we're shooting ourselves in the foot, essentially. Yeah, that, it, it's really rings true for me uh, in the industry or this particular space that I'm in because we've seen a lot of instances of NFT fraud uh, happening with people taking original artwork that was created by other people, uh, reminting it or just minting it for the first time. Uh, it was never an NFT, and then selling it. And it's something that is an ecosystem-wide problem, and the reason for that is that blockchains are permissionless, and anyone can you know, spin up a smart contract or use a platform that does it for you and mint NFTs, regardless of what content you want to put in there, they can upload it to the chain. And so it's not just sense problem if there's some counterfeits being circulated. It, it's the entire ecosystem's problem. And how we go about solving the identification and um, uh, integrity issue is really difficult because it requires all the players to come together in some way or another. And if there is uh, an organizing body, kind of like what you're suggesting, that facilitates that, it would go a long way because um, it's not something that any single company can single-handedly solve, right? OpenSea might take down a collection, but that doesn't mean it's taken off of Rarible. Right? And what are the communication channels? How are policies crafted and enforced um, in this decentralized system? Largely remains an open question and one that we're really interested in chatting with people about as well. Yeah, we literally are having this conversation today. We're, we're starting to work with now with fashion brands and creators. And sometimes fashion brands kind of over, they test the boundaries of intellectual property sometimes by bastardizing something from another creator. They're not necessarily doing it to, to steal someone's IP, but it happens because that's how a creative works. Um, but the moment you start putting that on chain, now you have an issue because that intellectual property is being literally taking, you're taking credit for that IP. So NFTs are, like, are literally capable of cleaning up all this IP law and, and, and creating a much more defined line between all these regulations, where in the physical world, without the NFT, without the blockchain, you're not actually able to check it. There's, there's infinite replicas of clothing, of art, of any, pretty much anything being used out there. Yeah. Um, the minute you put it on chain, you expose yourself to a ton of legal issues. That's why you saw, like, literally, that was, that was OpenSea's issue, like, last week. So markets should do a better job at checking. When an NFT is listed, is there any IP issue with it? Like, a lawyer should double-check everything. If you're not doing that, you're ignoring it, then a couple months down the road, you're probably gonna, you're gonna realize very quickly you got rugged or you got scammed. Yeah. Right. And this is where you know, we need the centralized institutions, right? Those, those institutions that, I've, I guess, has, has gained humanity's trust for the last you know, 50, 100 years. Um, I guess let's segue to you know, Web 2 versus Web 3, right? So um, today we have like, this extremist and polarized view of like, you know, Web 3 versus Web 2. Um, 
you know, I, I speak to some people and they're like, hey, I, I'm, I'm currently in Web 2 and I want to do my switch to Web 3, um, which, you know, I, I find it quite comical to, to make that statement. I actually believe that um, it, it looks more like a Web 2.5, right? So, um, you know, I'd, I'd love to just like, you know, learn more around uh, your guys' like thought on, on that. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely team Web 2.5. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's literally. Sometimes we have pitch decks, and I'll uh, and I'll say, "Scent is a Web 2.5 company," because, you know, I think the state of Web 3 is very sort of decentralization maximalist with the different tools. And granted, there are large companies like OpenSea, and MetaMask, and Coinbase. The components that go into a decentralized experience are huge companies. But even still, when it comes to onboarding one consumer, having to go through and onboard into all these other tools just to, for instance, support an artist, right, which is what you want to do, and maybe acquire an NFT as a result, is way too much burden. And so when I think about Web 2.5, one of the biggest, and NFTs in particular, one of the biggest things that I think about is the separation of uh, cryptocurrency and the blockchain as a substrate for NFTs and other digital records. And so at Scent, we are very of the mind that you do not need to be buying and selling NFTs using Ether or uh, USDC. Rather, you can take the financial layer and put it in the old world system of you know, Stripe and credit card payments and what people are familiar with, frankly, uh, and then bundle that with the Web3 digital asset component. And here comes the... <laughs> The one well, we're never going to want you to stop. <laughs> we just listen to you forever. But in honor of the next speakers, let's give our panelists a hand, everybody. Thank you for coming to share. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. <laughs>